This time on Going Green, the business of hydropower. Now, diverting moving water is actually one of the oldest ways to harness energy. For example, the ancient Greeks and Chinese used water wheels to grind grain in mills located by rivers. In modern times, water is usually collected in dams, then converted into electricity by using gravitational force to spin the water through a turbine, which in turn rotates a generator. Now, hydropower can also be generated without a dam by capturing the kinetic energy of moving water in a river. Well, a big benefit of hydropower is that it's renewable every year by snow and rainfall. In fact, it's the world's leading renewable energy source and supplies 70% of all renewable electricity. Now, China produces the most hydropower by far. Its Three Gorges hydro plant on the Yangtze River is one of the world's largest. Brazil, Canada, the US and Russia are the next largest producers. Around the world, the capacity of hydropower plants installed is more than one terawatt of electricity. That's enough to power about 10 billion 100 watt light bulbs at the same time. Well, as I mentioned, electricity can be generated either through water released from a dam or by the flow of a river. Either way, hydropower usually needs a substantial amount of kinetic energy. But now, a new type of turbine is allowing electricity to be generated in places like, believe it or not, slow-moving canals. Hendrik Sabrandi reports from Colorado. This is the way hydropower is typically produced. Large volumes of water that once released from a reservoir are converted by power plants into electricity. These large dams are quite efficient in the way they convert water to energy, but they're expensive and take a long time to permit and build. We see a paradigm shift in the way that power is going to be delivered in the 21st century. Emily Morris envisions hydropower on a much smaller scale. So our product is a portable, modular, standalone hydropower turbine. It's a real tight fit. <laughs> We got about three inches, three or four inches to spare. Several months ago, the utility Denver Water lowered the first of 10 turbines it purchased from Morris's company Emergy into this shallow canal connecting Colorado's Gross Dam and Ralston Reservoir. As water flows through that box, it causes the twin turbines to turn and that activates a proprietary gearing and drive system that we have. Each 10 kilowatt unit is capable of producing 88 megawatt hours of electricity a year, enough to power seven U.S. homes. We already have hydropower at quite a few of our dam sites, and we're looking to the future to be able to expand our hydroelectric capabilities, and, and this is really the, the forefront of, of that effort. Denver Water has 120 kilometers of these canals flowing within its system. The utility considers them very much an untapped resource, one that could add to its energy mix and help pay for its power needs. It makes sense. There's water uh, flowing through. There is power available at small scale. Um, the cost of installing a couple of the turbines, such as shown, is, seems to be not that great. This turbine array, which costs $300,000 and should be complete by the end of summer, is believed to be the first of its kind in the U.S. Our goal is to preserve the attributes that are beloved about hydropower, meaning its reliability, its predictability, uh, and its availability. But, she says, make it quicker and easier to deploy. Her startup is working with other utilities and commercial customers and has its eyes on the rest of the world, too. Being able to use these modules to really deliver meaningful power uh, to an energy hungry world reliably is our strategy. Canal hydropower, it's a low maintenance and low impact option at a time when every drop and every kilowatt counts. Hendrik Sabrandi, CGTN, Denver.